This is a video about the GCSE chemistry topic of life cycle assessment, which is part of paper two for AQA GCSE combined science and chemistry and comes in unit 10. By the end of this video, you should be able to state the different stages of a life cycle assessment in the correct order. You should be able to consider some questions that would need to be asked as part of writing a life cycle assessment. You should be able to discuss some problems with writing life cycle assessments. And finally, you should be able to evaluate products by writing an LCA. A life cycle is a representation of the various life stages that an organism goes through. So a caterpillar hatches from an egg and then after it's eaten lots and lots it forms into a cocoon and eventually it emerges as a butterfly which goes on to lay more eggs and the life cycle continues. In a life cycle assessment a company analyses the life of a product to see how much water and energy and raw materials is used at each stage and what the impact on the environment might be due to things like emissions of carbon dioxide. There are four main stages to a life cycle assessment and then through all of those four stages we have transport and distribution running because it's going to be relevant at each stage. We start out with the extraction and the processing of the raw materials. So let's say that the product I was trying to make was a computer. I'm going to need metal to make the wiring, plastic to make the casing and silicon to make the microchips. So for each one of those I need to think about where that material is going to come from and what I'm going to need to do to get hold of it and to have it in a usable form. So if we just concentrate on the metal, I'm going to need to find some ore, that's a rock that has enough of that metal compound to make it financially viable to extract, and I'm going to need to dig it up, so I'm going to need to quarry it. And then it's also going to take me quite a lot of energy and quite a lot of different processes to extract the metal from that rock. So all of that needs to go into my life cycle assessment. And then I need to do the same thing for the crude oil that's going to be used to make the plastic, to make the casing, and also for the silicon. My second step is about the manufacture and the packaging. So it might be that I'm going to wrap the whole thing in cellophane and I need some more crude oil to make that plastic. It might be that I'm going to put the computer in a cardboard box and so I need to think about where are the trees going to come from to make that cardboard. And also I need to think about the amount of energy that's going to be used by the factory that's making that computer. Then we move on to the use and operation during the computer's lifetime. So as I'm sat here tapping away on my computer, I'm using electricity and that electricity has to be generated somehow. And in the UK, that's mainly by burning fossil fuels. So again, that's going to feed into my life cycle assessment. Finally, when the computer's finished its job and maybe I'm ready to buy a new one or maybe it's just stopped working, we need to think about how I'm going to get rid of it. Is there anything in there that's biodegradable? Probably not in this instance. Is there anything that we could recycle? So is it possible to take the wiring out and melt it down and make new wires and use it again? Or is it just going to go into landfill and sit there doing nothing in a hole in the ground? Or is it even going to be incinerated and burnt in a furnace? And then as we say, for each one of those four stages, I'm also going to have to think about the transport and the distribution. So my lorries that are going to drive to the quarry where I'm going to dig up the rock that the copper ore is going to come from. And then there's going to be another lorry that's going to take the finished computers um, to PC World or wherever it is that's going to sell them and all those sorts of things as well. So you're already probably getting the idea that a full life cycle assessment that a company would do is going to involve a lot of different questions. So at each stage, I'm going to be asking myself, where is this coming from? What processes are going to need to be involved? How much energy is going to need to be involved? And these are all things I need to be considering while I'm writing my life cycle assessment. Now, it sounds like a life cycle assessment is going to be really good and really objective and facts based because I'm going to ask all these questions and accumulate all this data. But there are a couple of problems. The first one is that even though carrying out a life cycle assessment is a really good idea, it's going to be carried out by the company that wants to make the product. And so that's going to mean that they're not going to lie exactly, but they're definitely going to be taking the more favourable point of view. They're not going to be strictly objective, which means facts based. The other problem is that with even the best will in the world, if you're trying to be as objective as you possibly can, there are some things that you just can't know or that it's very hard to get data for. So I could put a number down that represents the amount of carbon dioxide that is released by a lorry carrying 100 of these computers as it drives 10 miles. That, that would be achievable. But there's just no way that I can know when those computers go to people's homes or offices, how much electricity they're going to use in running them, because I don't know how many hours a day they're going to be on the computer. And even if I did know that, I don't know in a year or in five years what proportion of British electricity is going to come from burning fossil fuels. So I can make a best estimate, but I can't be strictly accurate with these things. And that's going to be a real problem. 
Now, for all of their shortcomings, LCAs are really useful and it's really likely that you're going to get a four or six mark question where you're given two or three materials and asked to select which would be the best one for a particular purpose and why. And this is usually going to take the form of a table of data and a question where the keyword, the command word is evaluate. And you know, hopefully, that anywhere in GCSE AQA science where you see the word evaluate, they're asking you to compare and contrast, bring in your own knowledge and finally write a conclusion. And often the questions are structured in such a way that there isn't a right conclusion to reach. The important thing is that you back it up with data. So each one of the materials will have different advantages and disadvantages and you just need to justify why you're picking the one that you're picking. So in this question, I'm making greenhouse windows either out of glass or out of polycarbonate. And it's really important that where I'm using the data in that table, I'm not just quoting numbers. I'm actually saying this one is bigger. This one is smaller. And by how many times if I can do that? So looking at these numbers, I'd be saying firstly that the density of glass is about twice as high. So it's going to be much heavier. But then I also need to use my own knowledge to explain why that is important. So I would say the glass is nearly two times heavier and that would make it more costly to transport. Secondly, the polycarbonate is nearly 50% more expensive. And I probably don't need to justify why that's a bad thing because it's kind of obvious. Now, in terms of the lifespan, the polycarbonate has a higher lifespan, but in the line below, it says that it's going to discolour over time. And I'm trying to use this thing to make windows for a greenhouse. And my greenhouse is going to be full of plants that I want to do photosynthesis, so they're going to need light. So I might want to say that the polycarbonate has a longer lifespan, but because it discolours over time, I may end up replacing it earlier anyway. And then finally, I need to come up with some kind of conclusion. So as I say, there isn't a right answer here. You just have to back up what your feeling is. So I'm going to say in this instance that overall, I think polycarbonate is better because it's lighter and it has a longer lifespan. But it would be just as valid if I wanted to say that glass was better because it's significantly cheaper and it's not going to discolour over time. Here's another example of an evaluate type question where we've got two different materials and we're trying to say which is the better one. So for each line of the table, you need to think, is there anything that I already know from other parts of the specification that I can bring in? And if not, can I use the numbers and add something that way? So you've probably picked up straight away on the fact that crude oil is a fossil fuel. It's running out. It's a finite resource. And I want to say that. But actually, the materials for making glass are also finite. It's just that we don't have quite as much of a scarcity of them. So I want to highlight the fact that they're both made out of finite resources, but crude oil is running out faster. Then I can look at these temperatures. The maximum temperature for glass production is much, much higher. Why do we care? Well, there's going to be a cost implication, but also that's going to be worse for the environment. In terms of the number of times that I can use them, the glass can be reused 25 times, which is going to be much more sustainable. In terms of practical usage, the plastic milk bottle is available in more different sizes. And so that's just going to be better for the milk companies because some people only want one pint of milk and some people want four. And then finally, in terms of the percentage of recycled material, the glass milk bottle has a lot more recycled material in it. So again, that's going to contribute to it being more sustainable to use. And then finally, because this is an evaluate question, it's important that I reach a conclusion. So in this instance, I'm going to say that the glass milk bottle is a better choice because it's made from a more sustainable material and it doesn't require new glass to be made from scratch every single time. But it would be just as valid if I wanted to say that the plastic milk bottle was a better choice because it had a lower temperature to make it, which was going to be better for the environment in terms of the energy cost. And it's more useful because it's available in more sizes. It doesn't matter which one I conclude as long as I back up my answer. I hope you found that a useful introduction to life cycle assessment. Thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe for more Unit 10 videos coming soon.